Right up. Broadcasting Network, CUBN, where we want to see you be encouraged in Jesus' name. We are in the book of Revelation in our verse-by-verse verse study. We are in chapter 16, and starting at verse uh, 16, I think so. Let's see. Yeah, chapter 17 is really going to be amazing when we get to that one because that explains the who is Babylon, Mystery Babylon, who is um, the Antichrist, explains a lot. And we're going to go through these with a lot of care and glean as much information as we can from these scriptures. Revelation chapter 16, verse 16. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Now, Armageddon is where all the remaining nations of the earth at that point in time on the timeline are going to be gathered in northern Israel near the place that is called Megiddo. There's a town that's called Megiddo. And the Valley of Megiddo would be where Armageddon takes place. Um, in verse 17, and the seventh angel poured out his vial. Now, remember, we were going through the vial judgments. The vial judgments are the third series of seven. You have first the seal judgments, then the trumpet judgments, and then the vial judgments. Now, we have been... We were studying yesterday about the vile judgments, the third set. Now, the vile judgments are the ones where they are poured out upon. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a lot of pollen. We got some storms moving into dust and everything. Um, the vile judgments are those that are poured out upon those who took the mark of the beast and worshipped the beast and his image. Uh, personally, I can't see how anybody could ever stomach bowing down before Satan, the wimp, and his wimpy minions like the Pope and the false prophet. Um, you know, I guess it takes all kinds. <laughs> <laughs> I can stomach it. I'm sorry. There's no way I could stomach bound for that wimp. Uh, but evidently, they don't seem to mind too much. <laughs> they don't even mind that he's a wimp. They bow before him anyway. <laughs> I mind, okay? <laughs> in, in verse 17 of Revelation chapter 16, and the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. We've heard these words before. It is finished, haven't we? 
on the cross, the king said, it is finished. Now, it's saying here, this voice comes out of the temple from the throne saying, it is done. That is the seventh vial. It says in verse 18, and there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. This is the one where Jesus Christ returns and sets his feet on the earth, and it is such a huge quake. Like it says here, there was such a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth. <laughs> that's an earthquake that's off all the charts. And the scripture indicates that it levels every city on the planet. Every city on the planet will be level. So mighty an earthquake and so great. Man. Okay, I want to find you a scripture here that talks about when the Lord sets his feet upon the Mount of Olives, what happens? There is a great earthquake, and his feet shall stand in that, this is Zechariah 14, 4. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. Um, let's see. Mount of Olives. I'm looking to see. See if there's any other references here. Okay, let me look in Zechariah 14 and see if there is. Uh, Zechariah is the la um, second to the last book in the Old Testament. Okay, Zechariah. Now, it says in Jack Zechariah chapter 14, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. This is 14.1 in Zechariah. And thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. Israel is overrun. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the west and toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the south and half of it, I mean, toward the north and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. Now this is the second coming which happens at the end when Armageddon comes. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. The, the days and the nights are going to be indistinguishable. In verse 8, and it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. Now that's interesting, isn't it? How can it be in summer and in winter at the same time? Because it's a round earth, okay? It's a round earth. It's summer in some places and winter in the others, 
Um, but it may be talking about more than this because uh, the timing, it would be in summer, but of the second coming, but it may look like a nuclear winter. It's possible. In verse nine, and the Lord shall be the king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Rimon south of Jerusalem, and it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place. From Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananiel unto the king's wine presses. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them. And they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. And so shall be the plague of the horse and of the mule and of the camel and of the ass and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles every year during the new millennium. It says everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So those who refuse to come and, and present themselves before the king, they won't get any rain. Their land will die. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain. There shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seethe therein, and in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Wow. That's Zechariah chapter 14. When the Lord returns at the end of the vile judgments, things are going to be very, very different. Now, we're back over here in Revelation 16. And we just spoke about the earthquake in verse 18. And in verse 19, um, the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell. Okay. Notice the great city was divided into three parts like we just read. And the cities of the nations fell. Every city on the planet is leveled by this, what, 15, 20 point earthquake. Um, it's the greatest earthquake. It says in verse 18 that there was an earthquake such as not, as was not since men were upon the earth, stronger than has ever been upon the earth before. And it says that the cities of the nations fell in verse 19. All of them are leveled. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail 
out of heaven. Every stone about the weight of a talent. That's about a hundred pounds. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail. For the plague thereof was exceeding great. Let's see how much a talent weighs specifically. All right. Okay, when used, uh, see, a talent is about 110 pounds, 50 kilograms. Um, and some say that the talent typically weighed about 33 kilograms or 75 pounds, varying from 20 to 40 kilograms. Uh, so it can be anywhere from 75 to 110 pounds on a talent. When you're talking about gold and silver and the weight of things. So the weight of a talent, you're looking at a minimum of 75 pound hailstones that fall during this time. It's going to beat everything to a pulp. Everything. Now we're going to go into chapter 17. Let me come over here and say hi to everybody. <laughs> okay. Are we up on Facebook? Let's see. Yay. Here we are. We are up on Facebook. Glory to God. Okay. Wonderful. And also, oh, wow. Hi. Hi, Gracie. She says, hi, Lisa from Hong Kong. Hello, Hong Kong from uh, Glenpool, Oklahoma. Glory to God. We're so glad to have you. Hi, Lori. Wonderful to see you, sweetheart. Hi, Tad, Jan, Diane. I'm so glad to see all of you. Glory to God. Now, let's see. Where is, um, where is my YouTube? I have it up. Oh, here we go. I want to come over here and say hi to everybody on YouTube. Hi, Heath, Shirley, Vonda, Cheryl. Love you guys. So glad to see all of you. Let's get into chapter 17 of the book of Revelation, shall we? And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. The great whore. This is the Roman Catholic Church, the false church, also known as Babylon, the great. Okay? Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now, what is it? What is it talking about when it's saying that this great whore that sitteth on many waters has committed fornication with the kings of the earth? Well, the church. The true church is supposed to bring peace, okay? The false church, which is this great whore, is guilty of fornication because they are weapons manufacturers and they, the Jesuits are instructed and even say so in their oath that they will take, they are going to take peace from those countries who are enjoying peace. They will go in there and they will cause strife with their, between them and their neighbors. And then they sell weapons to both sides. That is why they are called fornicators because they're supposed to be bringing peace, but they propagate war instead. So this uh, false church is called a whore. Now think about this for a second. A whore 
meets with God by appointment three times a week. All right. The wife is with him every single day. There is no appointed time to go and meet with God. They, he lives with them. They love him every day. The wife. Okay. They love him every day. The whore meets with him by appointment. Think about that. And it says that the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. The money they have made from selling weapons of war is in the billions and billions, probably trillions. It's ridiculous how much money they've made on um, weapons and propagating war. In verse 3, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast. So this whore is a woman sitting upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Now, remember what we were talking about, the seven heads and ten horns? You're looking at the new world order and the false church, seven heads, 10 horns. These heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. This revived Roman empire is controlled from Rome. This new world order is controlled from the Vatican from Rome, the revived Roman Empire. Now he says, this, I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Now right on down here in verse 9, we're going to look at what these are, but we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and keep moving in verse 4. And the woman was, let's find out who the woman is. Let's prove it. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. Purple and scarlet. Have you ever seen the Vatican's guard? Have you ever seen a gathering of cardinals? Some are in scarlet and some are in purple. Purple and scarlet are the colors of the Vatican cardinals and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Ever been inside the Vatican? I haven't, but I've seen a lot of pictures. It is ordained like you would not believe, I mean, or decorated, not ordained, but um, that's not the word I'm looking for. It is um, gold, precious stones, and pearls everywhere on the inside of the Vatican, having a golden cup in her hand. She lives richly, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication, full of abominations. There are things that go on in the Catholic Church that are just unspeakable. There is a reason why so many pervert priests come out of that church. It's wicked. There, you know, I've shown on my wall many times the scriptural violations of the Roman Catholic Church. Thou shalt make, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Walk in any Catholic church and all you see is graven images everywhere. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. They lift Mary to a position of deity and call her co-redemptrix and they bow to statues of her which is idolatry and they pray to her which is necromancing you don't pray to dead people that is not permitted you are not allowed to pray to dead people the saints are just sinners 
like us, saved by the saved by the blood. Okay, they're not. Um, they don't turn into gods for anybody to pray to. They bow down before statues, idolatry. They bow before a man who sits on a throne in the house of God and he lets all these world leaders come and bow down to him and kiss his ring like he is a god. He's a wimp. He's a snake in a dress is what he is. He is Stay Puff the Destroyer. And he is, a, I don't know, I see him sitting on a throne in the house of God with a crown on his head. And I think, wow, you are one piece of work, man. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> He is the only bozo on the entire planet that has the unmitigated gall to sit on a throne in the house of God with a crown on his head. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, let's see. I've got a question over here on YouTube. <laughs> um... Oh, Karen, I'm so glad that you're there, sweetheart. My my heart is with you, sister. And everything's going to be okay. You hang in there. Okay? Um, Shirley says, would that be idol worship, fornication? Um, it's idolatry. But the fornication, it, you know, I guess it could be, um, rather than fornication, it's, well, yeah, I would say it, that could apply. That could apply as well. Uh, but the it's also fornication is they are supposed to serve the God of Abraham. But they're cheating on him by bowing before another God. Okay. Fornication is cheating on God. Okay, their loyalty is supposed to be with him, but it's not. It's with someone else. The snake, the serpent, the wimp, Satan. Um, Cheryl says, Lisa, when do you think the U.S. falls in prophecy? At some, I think it's probably, from what I can tell, it looks like the... Evacuation is probably what takes down the USA. Or it's possible that Yellowstone could erupt and that would take us out of the equation as well. Okay. Yellowstone has really been talking here lately. Hopefully these things will wait until we leave. I really don't think um, it's going to be, well... <laughs> We have Satan cast down after the sixth seal opens. Um, after the sixth seal opens, it's probably going to get really scary. Uh, and that would happen July 27th or so. Then it's going to start to get really real and scary. Um, as war breaks out in heaven above us. Now, I was I had heard that the U.S. government is now starting to talk about UFOs because they have been seeing more and more of them. And, uh, you know, you've got a dozen major countries around the world, big countries, uh, and all the surrounding countries. You're looking at the European countries, Mexico, Canada, China, Russia, all the India all of these countries have made disclosure to their populations that we are not alone. Something is here uh, that doesn't belong here. They're talking about these UFOs that make, they are faster than anything else, than anything man has that can go fast. The, you know, the fastest our planes will go, they leave us in the dirt these UFOs. <clears throat> so the 
the speed with which these things are capable of moving is just unbelievable. It's It just means further advanced technology than what we have. That's what that means. The technology is further advanced. Okay. Now we're going to go to a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Straight up. 